spring is coming and I'll be making these inline spinners for holding swim baits. And guys, inline spinner is a crazy, crazy way to catch fish right at the end of winter and early pre-spawn fishing for bass, pickerels, heck, even snakeheads. So to, in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can make this inline spinner with one of these worm hooks so you can put on any sort of soft plastic in the end, making it weedless. Let's go over the materials that we'll need today to make this lure. You need some of these worm hooks right here, and I'm using Gamakatsu G-Lock worm hook size. So y'all, you guys should pick the size for the lure that you'll be throwing. I'll be typically throwing in the early spring time, K-Tex size 3.3 swing impact fat. You're gonna need a choice of spinners, gold, silver, whatever, um, hammered or not. I'm using gold hammered. These are size two Indiana blades. And you need the right clevises. These are what it sits on to swing on your wire. And this is size two as well. You're gonna need some tiny beads. Uh, this is a 1 8 inch nickel or you can opt for plastics. I know I did some projects in the past using plastic. You guys have glass beads. You just need some sort of beads and I'll show you why. And then you need some weights. Right here I got Swagger Tackle. They're tungsten cone head weights. This is their flipping weight. And it's 1 8 ounce. You need some stainless steel wires. I have 0.03 inches diameter and at six inch length. You wouldn't need the whole six inch length, but um, more the merrier. And then your assorted different pliers. I have my wire bending pliers, my needle nose pliers, my wire cutter. First thing you want to do is take your wire. We gotta bend the part that will hold on to the hook. So the first thing I will do is I am gonna start right about an inch, an inch down. I am gonna bend approximately 45 degrees only. Okay, just like that. And I'm gonna shift it down just a little bit and then I'm gonna start bending on this second diameter. Okay, so squeeze tightly. And then you bring this whole thing around. Once you bend past it, you wanna clamp this down very tight. Get you a nice round bend, and then I'm gonna bend this thing back straight out. And it doesn't have to look perfect, and I'll show you why. Next, you wanna take your hook, and if you guys want, you split rings, you guys can, but I don't plan on taking this apart once I in, uh, set up this whole thing. But if you plan on changing size of your hook, then you may wanna put a split ring, but this is it, done deal. Next, I take my tungsten weight, slide it to the top, and also slide it over this guy right here. Slide it over both wires, get the thing all the way down, just like that. As you can see, this can swing this way, and it's really important to take note of this loop right here, okay? And I'll show you guys later in a second, when, especially when you're making your last loop. Once you get your cone all the way to the bottom, you take your needle nose pliers and what you want to do is you want to bend this guy down so it stays, this, uh, this weight will stay in place. Okay, so that's already down and I'll bend it down just a little bit more. Okay, the wire cutters. So next, I'll take some bead, or just one bead. It's up to you guys how you guys want to set up your beads, and it really depends on your size of your blade as well. But uh, since I have a relatively small blade, I think one bead should be enough, and we're gonna put this nice bead right on top here. And what this also do is, you guys see this right here? It, it prevents your clevis, which I will insert in next, from catching on to that, so you insert your clevis, and the clevis is this guy right here, the C, you used to call it the C. Insert it partially. Then you take your blade, insert your blade into here. Then you wanna put it through the other hole, and then you wanna drop it right there. As you see, this is gonna be swinging freely, no problems. No problems at all. 
Okay, so we're gonna make the last loop, and I mentioned earlier that you need you should take notice of this loop right here, since it's um, facing this way. We want to make the loop same thing right here, so that when we look at the whole lore of this profile, it kind of looks like a streamlined um, streamlined lure. You don't want the one loop this way and one loop that way. So let's grab this guy right here. As, as usual, you want to do your first bend just a little bit, maybe like a couple degrees, all right? Just like that. Then you make your full loop right above that bend. Clamp tight, rotate a little bit. Careful not to hook yourself. All right, you got your loop all the way around. Try to swap your other pliers. Clamp it down right there nice and tight. Make it twist at least one and a half times around. That's one and a half, but there. We'll stop right there. And then we will snip this. And there we have it. So let's rig this bad boy up with a K-Tech. Big shout out to K-Tech USA. These are killer lures for pre-spawn, for bass, pickerels, and of course I'm doing this for snakeheads. But guys, this lure right here, this whole setup, because spinners, inline spinners are great early in season and small swim baits like these are killer as well. Put them both together and you have a killer combination. Just like that. You have it tech expose or you guys can bury it, the choice is yours. Thank you everyone for watching, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, and if you guys are new to my channel, please consider subscribing, because you will definitely see me using this this spring. Tight lines, guys.